and apparently um i can't think of the guy's first name but the last name is vidal and they own a record company and i think gideon has the controlling shares in that company um so apparently when he was younger his father committed suicide because i think he did like um kind of like a ponzi scheme type thing and he killed himself and so um so she found out a good little inf piece of information based off of what Carrie had looked up for her. So then Gideon comes to pick her up. They get in the limo. She's all turned on and she wants him like then and now. He tries to fight her. Doesn't work. Um, <laughs> because he's like, he wanted to, he's like, I want to fuck you for hours. I was like, shit. Um, but she's like, I need you now. And so she rides him and just like after that, his mood changes like he becomes hard and it was like he was cold and she was like fuck what did she do so at the event she dance she winds up dancing with christopher um because she does see him talking to the woman that he she saw a lot in the pictures her come to find out her name's magdalene and she's just kind of like you know what whatever so when christopher comes up to ask her to dance she's like yeah sure no problem so they go back and forth have a little conversation um and carrie comes to take her and dance and then gideon comes and gets her and he's like stay away from my brother and then she was just kind of like okay he seems nice though you know <laughs> so then she goes to the restroom magdalene's there magdalene of course lets her know um oh you've already fucked him oh well you lose um once he fucks you he loses interest and she's like i'm doing the long game so magdalene wants him as well so then she's feeling all like a little distraught she's like shit i fucked him now he's not gonna want me because and and you gotta think this does kind of line up with the fact <laughs> that she fucked him and then he he was cold so i kind of get her like feel it like believing that shit like yeah i would think that's probably the situation too so she goes home crying she doesn't answer any of his calls and then monday hits and um he wants her to come up for lunch and she goes up and then when she gets up there she tells him i don't want to see you anymore and he of course was like nope <laughs> she was like this is gonna work for me and he was like i will do anything to be with you he's like if you want more tell me what you want i will give you whatever you want so he apparently has never felt this way about anyone and he doesn't do relationships. So that's what makes it a little difficult. But at the same time, he's willing to do whatever to have her. So then they agree that they are going to be together because it's not going to work any other way. So she tells him about Magna. She tells him about Magdalene. He tells her, I'll talk to her because he is friends with her. And um, she says, I'm really, she tells him, I'm a really jealous person. Do you think you can handle that? And he was like, yes, because I'm going to be the same way about you. So when she goes back down to her desk, Mark tell her, you know, he's like, can I talk to you? And he kind of tells her, you know, you might want to be careful. You know, I don't want you to get hurt, you know, and then you quit because he loves her there. She does a great job as an assistant. And he's like, and plus he likes her as a person. He's like, I just don't want to see you get hurt. And she assures him, listen, I'm not leaving for no reason. I love this job. Don't worry. And so uh, then Gideon and Eva, they go get a phone after work. And then because um, he was calling the house phone, by the way, before. I know this is from like, what, 11 or 12 years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, people still had house phones, house phones back then. So he was calling the house phone trying to reach her. Um, so they go get a phone. Um, then they go work out at this gym and then they get all worked up and then he's like i have a place around the corner they go up to like this upscale hotel room hard fuck session and when he goes in the shower she looks in the drawers and she sees like a ton of condoms sex toys still in the packaging lubricant so she realized this was like his fuck pad hotel room so she threw everything on the bed and she left so gideon's like blowing her phone up and he texts her he's like i fucked up please don't break up with me talk to me and she didn't answer the phone at first she was going back and forth about you know she was kind of going back and forth with herself you know and so finally she answered and she's like i'm sorry i left i just couldn't deal and he's like where are you so she kind of describes where she turned this and that she was at like a little italian place so he pops up um and 
she was it was funny because she was so distraught she couldn't even tell him the name of the place it was so funny but he figured it out with the directions that she said i turned left and then i turned right and he figured it out um so he comes and gets her he takes her to his apartment his actual apartment and of course they bang it out they fall asleep and she wakes up to him screaming get off me it hurts slowly he wakes up and then um they fuck again raw and they go to work and carrie calls her and he's landed like this huge campaign he's super excited he wants to go on a lunch date and so she's about to go on the lunch date when she sees the headline about her and getting gideon apparently someone had caught him kissing outside in front of the gym and they had her whole name eva eva Tremel. it was like front page news so she goes to lunch with carrie and he calms her down because she was flipping out and because she's like you know she doesn't have a social media anything because she tries to stay to where people don't know where she is and we'll find out a little bit more why she's like that a little later um so he of course was like it's okay like it's gonna be okay like just chill out it's okay (laughs) um you know you're he's like you don't make sense like at first you were mad that he just wanted to treat you like a fuck thing now you're mad that you're public like what the fuck like what is wrong with you (laughs) so um she also worried that people were going to start digging into her past and that was going to embarrass Gideon and her family and Carrie was like Stanton buried all of that stuff and she went to his office um when she got back to work she went back she went to Gideon's office gave him a blowjob swallowed all his cum so the next day she sees photos of Gideon and Magdalene at a dinner as well as a story with photos of her and Carrie saying that she was fucking with Carrie like that was her lover as well so she gets a note from Gideon that was like meet me in the office and she sends the note back and she's like I got plans she was going to lunch with her boss Mark and his partner so then when they get outside Gideon like comes after her (laughs) and he's like is that what's going on you're fucking Carrie too like he believed this shit (laughs) and she was like no he's just my friend you know and um so they have this whole back and forth about the stories and um she's like we need to talk i need to tell you about my past she's like come over tonight and we'll talk about everything and so um then he when he comes over that night she tells him everything you know about you know how her mother's parents disowned her and that while when she remarried her stepbrother um started doing things that caused her trauma and even led to a miscarriage when she was 14 and um they found out she had you know anal uh what was the word they used like that was like you know you could tell she'd been violated you could tell her cooch had been violated and everything and so she when so as soon as her mother found out of course she divorced him but of course now we see why she's so protective because she that happened for so many that happened for like four years it started when she was 10 so that happened for four years and she didn't know about it so you you can understand why she's like super overprotective and so she walked away with um two million dollars the mother did but a uh eva walked away with five million it was supposed to be hush money she's never touched it stanton like takes care of that and it's multiplied beyond so she's she's a rich woman she doesn't need anybody's money and she tells him that like if you ever thought i needed your money i really don't like i'm good and he was like oh okay but she don't she doesn't like to touch it because she considers it blood money so she was worried about the way gideon was looking at her and she wanted to leave because he i mean you someone tells you a traumatic story like that there's gonna be pity sadness in your eyes you know it's gonna be there and that was a look she never wanted from Gideon and so she was like she needed him not to have pity she wants that lust and that want in his eyes and so of course they he fucked her hard to prove he still wanted her and um she tried to ask him about his past but he uh uh-uh that was like shut And we know something happened for you to be screaming in the middle of the night some bullshit about get off me. So we know something happened. So then 
he tells her he's going to take um take her on a proper date they go and you know he asks some questions about you know how he met how she met carrie and she told him about group therapy and things like that um they go back to his place um they fall asleep he has a nightmare again she turns on the light she's screaming get off me and he's jacking his dick ferociously as he's screaming and eventually he wakes up and he just says he had a nightmare he can't remember what it was so eva's like pleading with him like please just tell me the truth like be honest with me like i bared everything to you like be honest with me and he doesn't and then she leaves and she goes home and carrie was just uh letting a blonde chick out that he had banged and he tells her you know he loves trey but you know it is what it is so like carrie has a situation a thing of destroying shit he when he's happy he's gonna fuck it up that's pretty much he's um he that's his pattern so the next day she goes to work she doesn't hear anything from gideon magdalene comes by to try and talk to her but she set it up good she called gideon's assistant and asked him to escort her to gideon's office because she knew the woman was up to no good so then she went to get some lunch she runs into christopher and he invites her to the garden party for the record label she agrees to come she get back, she gets back to the office she ha uh, has a note from gideon and um she thinks he's breaking up with her he didn't say that but that's where her brain is so then she gets a call from her mother her mother's crying going on why did you tell him so we find out Gideon went to Stanford, um, Stanton, saying it wrong, and told him that he wanted to know where Nathan was, and he wanted to know what had been done to Barry, what had happened. And so she winds up going to therapy with her mother later that day, and he, she tells the therapist everything that's been going on. And the, and the therapist was every, able to kind of redirect the mother to let her see what she was doing was overstepping. And the mother kind of got it. So that worked out. Um, she doesn't hear from Gideon um, for a few days. She, of course, is miserable. Um, her and Carrie go shopping for, like, this killer outfit for the garden party at the Vidal Estate. She goes and um, she went because she thought Gideon wasn't going to be there. And so when she first gets there, he's not there. So she met his mother, father, uh, well, stepfather. And um, the, the first thing they ask her, are you a real blonde? then she's like what like that's so random and weird but he has a history of just messing with brunette so they were like shoot maybe she's a brunette under there or something and she's like no natural blonde so then gideon shows up and he's like why are you here i don't want you here so she of course feels horrible she's already hasn't seen this man so now she really feels like oh my god he doesn't want me and she's all emotional he pulls her into the house and he thought he had been staying away because he thought that she was disgusted by what she saw him do in his nightmare. He didn't realize that she's thinking something totally different. Like she was mad that he wouldn't open up to her. So it's funny how they both, if they could talk, they would be okay. <laughs> Maybe, but they can't communicate worth shit. So that was the whole thing and the reason he didn't really want to be there um and why he doesn't want because he doesn't he doesn't trust like the family like he feels like an outsider you know he just bad things have happened in that house and so he doesn't like going there so gideon being gideon it's like i need to be inside of you like now right so he's fucking her in the house and then magdalene pops up and she sees them and then she like runs away and then they keep going at it and so he f's her hard or whatever he comes inside of her and when he pulls out of her like come like falls on the floor and it's like turns him on even more so so he gets hard again and so then she was just all in the moment <laughs> and she was like I want you to own all of my body and he's like I don't do anal play and she was like I need you to erase what Nathan did so he tells her you need a safe word and she was like I don't need one I trust you with my life so he insists she does you know get a safe word and so she comes up with crossfire and I was like oh that's so cute 
Um, so he starts fingering her ass while fucking her pussy again, and then they get interrupted midway by Christopher. And so he's.